Hello students, today let us analyze the novel Pride and Prejudice as a satirical comment prevalent in the social issues of the era when Jane Austen had written the novel. Let us discuss the important characters in the novel. To begin with, we have Miss Elizabeth. She is the protagonist of the novel as we get to know the other characters through her. She is lively, quick-witted, sharp-tongued, bold and intelligent. She has pride in her ability. What is that ability? She feels that she is very good at judging people. The truth that she can understand the situations and people's characters very easily is what she gets carried away with. Her perceptive abilities fail her because she is influenced by vanity and she judges people rashly. Elizabeth realizes her grave mistake when she finds and understands that she has greatly misjudged both Mr. Darcy and Mr. Wickham. By the end of the novel, she overcomes her prejudice and she finds happiness in surrendering herself to the love she and Darcy have found for both of them. This is how we understand that there is a transformation in the character of Elizabeth from the beginning towards the end of the novel. Next important character is Mr. Darcy, Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy. He is handsome, tall, intelligent, rather asocial because he is aloof and his aloof decorum is seen by many as excessive pride and extreme consciousness of class differences at the beginning of the novel. Darcy is viewed as rude and conceited by all the inhabitants of Meryton as well as Elizabeth Bennet. That is the first impression he creates among the people around him or even to the readers. He does however have a strong sense of honour and virtue. Elizabeth's rebukes help him to recognize his faults of pride and social prejudice. We also see that there is a transformation in his character as well where he slowly transforms himself towards the end of the novel and he tries to amicably propose Elizabeth and he awaits her positive response. So that is also a transformation in the character. Now moving on to Mrs. Bennet. This is a very interesting character. She lacks all sense of propriety and has no concern for the moral or intellectual education of her daughters. She is perfectly happy with Lydia's marriage which is much against a mother because when a daughter elopes with somebody, a mother is not supposed to be happy. But all that she feels content about is that she would live happily with a wealthy rich man. And then. We also observe that her impropriety is a constant source of mortification for Jane and Elizabeth. So there is a lot of cynic criticism that we can observe through Mrs. Bennet's character. Charlotte Lucas acts as a foil to Elizabeth by embodying the opposite view on marriage. Charlotte gives in to the necessity of acquiring financial security through marriage. This is something that Elizabeth is not in agreement with. Although Charlotte's marriage of convenience to Mr. Collins is criticized by Elizabeth, her situation and marriage is much more realistic than is Elizabeth's for 19th century Britain. During those days, it was quite acceptable that marriages are made only for gaining a social or financial security. And then coming to Mr. Collins, an extremely comical character because of his mix of obsequiousness and pride. Mr. Collins is fond of making long and silly speeches and speaks what he thinks the people around him want to hear or what will make the people around him think well about him. He tries to project a different picture of himself but most often he fails to project that and his true self is revealed. Then we have another important character, Lady Catherine de Vero, that is the aunt of Mr. Darcy. She likes to let others know of their inferiority to her. She always wants to show her status. She loves to give people advice about how to conduct their lives. 
extremely conscious of class differences, she attempts to prevent Darcy from marrying Elizabeth, but inadvertently brings them together. Without her knowledge, it is because of her intrusion that Darcy and Elizabeth come together towards the end. Austen tells a straightforward story, event by event, exactly as it occurred in a chronological sequence. However, a closer look reveals that it's not a mere record of events. Instead, it's a fine interweaving of a plot within a subplot. Instead, we find that the main plot concerns the stormy romance between Elizabeth and Darcy, the main characters, and the conflict between their pride and their bigotry. Their feelings born from their first impressions are not the only hurdle to their relationship, but instead there are three subplots which also complicate the manner and the relation that they had developed. The first is Bingley's attraction to Jane and Darcy's intervention to save his friend from an undesirable marriage. The second is Wickham's ability to deepen Elizabeth's prejudice against Mr. Darcy. Lastly, it is Charlotte's marriage to Mr. Collins which ultimately throws Elizabeth and Darcy together. That brings their union towards the end of the novel. The novel has neat and coherent dramatic structure. At the Meriton, where Darcy meets Elizabeth, there is the first sowing of the seed of pride and prejudice in both of them. The prejudice of Elizabeth is strengthened by Wickham's disclosure of Darcy's unfair treatment, which of course is not true, but since Elizabeth believes in Wickham, she develops a hatred towards Darcy. Darcy is however attracted to Elizabeth and his feelings towards Elizabeth grow steadily warmer. He develops a better feeling for Elizabeth towards the later part of the novel. When she is visiting Collins, Darcy proposes to her. His proposal reveals his pride. Angry with his frank condensation, Elizabeth rejects him outrightly. This rejection is the dramatic climax of the plot. Darcy's letter of explanation makes Elizabeth realize the irrationality of her prejudice against him. Here, Austen creates another situation. Wickham elopes with Lydia, that is Elizabeth's sister. Darcy exerts himself to force Wickham to marry Lydia. He was instrumental in their marriage. Elizabeth is grateful and when he proposes to her again, she accepts him after knowing the truth about his character. Thus, a pretty tangle is created and at the same time it is resolved finally. The Jane and Bingley subplot is quite naturally woven into the main plot. It runs parallelly with the main plot. Both these lovers serve as a foil to Elizabeth and Darcy. The novel imitates drama in its structural neatness and unity. The novel is told from the point of view of Elizabeth, who at first appears to be a mirror of characters. We see other characters and situations as they impinge upon Elizabeth. As she looks upon at them, we are also made to look at those characters through Elizabeth and her understanding. It is this dominant position that gives a unity to the entire novel. Let's move on to the theme of the novel. As it is very obvious, we understand that the pivotal role, the main theme is that of marriage and how important marriage is to individuals and what is the importance given to marriage in the society in general. Throughout the novel, the author describes the various types of marriages and reasons behind them. Marriage out of economic compulsions can be seen in Charlotte's marriage to Collins. Marriage due to sensual pleasure can be seen in Lydia's marriage to Wickham. And the marriage of Jane and Elizabeth 
are the outcome of true love between well-matched persons. Another major theme is that pride and prejudice both stand in the way of relationships. They can never bring two characters or two persons together. They will always stand as a hindrance. This is seen very clearly. And when we look at the characters, as embodied in the persons of Darcy and Elizabeth, the relationship between them is widened when there is pride and prejudice and it narrows down and they get closer when they remove this pride and prejudice from them. As is observed, pride narrows the vision of a person and causes one to underestimate the other human beings around them. Similarly, prejudice blinds the vision and leads to false perceptions about others. You tend to misjudge people if you have a prejudice against them. Darcy's pride founded on social prejudice prevents him from seeing the truth of a situation. Similarly, Elizabeth's pride in her ability to evaluate people from first impressions clouds her judgment, making her prone to think ill of Darcy and at the same time trust Wickham, which is also a wrong decision. Only when Darcy becomes more humble and Elizabeth accepts that her judgments were wrong and were based on prejudice and not on reason or any logic, can they relate to one another and find happiness together. A minor theme found in the novel is appearance versus reality. What seems to be and what actually is. There is a difference between this. With Austin stressing that a person cannot be judged in the first look by his or her outer being. During the course of the novel, several characters are not properly judged for good conduct does not necessarily mean good character. There is a difference. A person may be good from within but may not be able to display his character all the times in all the situations. Just as a pretty face does not indicate a pure soul. Another theme stressed by the author is that in order to display a good sense, a vitally important characteristic a person must possess intelligence. He should be intelligent enough to understand how to act and how to react in a given situation. So each of the major characters in the novel is judged against these three important criteria. Consideration of class as a theme which is present everywhere in the novel. Every aspect of novel reveals the importance given to social consciousness in that time. While Austen does not call for the leveling of all social classes, she does criticize an overemphasis on class distinction. Darcy's pride is based on his extreme class consciousness, yet eventually he sees that factors other than wealth determine who truly belongs in the aristocracy. This is what we observe as the major theme in the novel. After discussing the main plot and the subplots interwoven, let us move on to the importance of marriage in the novel. The moment you talk about Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, it immediately connects you to the theme that it is marriage. And Jane Austen had extremely radical views for her time and believed that marriage should occur only for love and not on the grounds of superficial feelings or pressures to marry or not even social status. Austin uses characters as literary devices to show the contrast between those who have married for love, those who married for social status, who married under compulsion or for any other reason as such. The first sentence of the novel highlights the importance of marriage. It provokes the feeling that the purpose of marriage is to merely create a social security. That is what Mrs. Bennet projects in the beginning of her character. The character of Elizabeth 
does not fit this generalization. She is not of the opinion that marriage is for social security, but something beyond that. The entailment of Mr. Bennett's estate leaves his daughters in a situation which requires them to marry well, that is to get married to wealthy bachelors. Yet, Elizabeth refuses to marry for financial purposes. Although Mr. Collins would provide Elizabeth a home and a long-term stability for the Bennett family, she realizes that she could never love him nor be happy with him as a wife. So she refuses his proposal in spite of knowing how important it could be for her family when it is considered as a financial matter. The marriage between Darcy and Elizabeth reveals characteristics of a successful marriage that is after better understanding between the individuals only then can a marriage be successful. One of these characteristics is that love cannot be bought by appearances and must gradually develop after knowing the personality of the partner. Darcy and Elizabeth are amongst the few characters within the novel that marry for love. They are also among the few characters who find happiness in their relationship. They did not marry under compulsion. It is only after they get to understand each other better that they decide to get married. Austin uses the relationships of three other couples to compare with the relationship of Darcy and Elizabeth. Wickham and Lydia, the couple who eloped. These two characters are used by Austin to prove the outcomes of relationships which are based on superficial attraction, just get carried away. And Charlotte marries Collins in order to gain the financial and social security. The novel reflects the society during that time where many women like Charlotte need to marry men they are not in love with but in order to gain a social security. Charlotte often finds herself rather embarrassed to be married to Mr. Collins. So though she married, it is only against her inner self that she marries. She knows very well that she is marrying him for a financial security. The relationship between these two characters reveals the outcomes of placing practicality before romance. She tried to be more practical than being carried away by the romantic feelings. Finally, not to forget the marriage between Mr. and Mrs. Bennett represents a marriage devoid of mutual respect. Mrs. Bennett never had respect for Mr. Bennett because she always tells him that being a father of five daughters, he should think about only getting them married to eligible bachelors. Mr. Bennett lives in general retreat and isolation from his disorganized wife. So this is another couple which gives a different angle of marriage. After discussing the theme and the importance of marriage in the novel, let's discuss the style of Jane Austen. Austen's graceful economical narrative style was unique in her time, considering that literature in this era was given to worldliness and emotional overindulgence. The story is told in a readable prose without a single superfluous word. The reader does not have to pain himself to understand the vocabulary used in the novel. The novel is written largely in dialogue which is so lively and so revealing of characters that they have been often lifted for the purpose of dramatic representation on stage and screen. Austin uses the technique of free indirect speech to develop both the characters and the plot. From the very beginning, we observe that Austin invites the readers to follow events from Elizabeth's point of view sharing her prejudices and her misjudgments. So the readers are made to look at the other characters in the novel through Elizabeth. The meaning of free indirect speech is that although the narrative is told in the third person, 
the reader is predominantly given the views of Elizabeth. Furthermore, the narrative takes on the style of Elizabeth's thoughts and in the manner in which she speaks, resulting in a very witty style, making the novel an easy and thoroughly enjoyable while reading. That has given it the fame that it acclaimed. A common mistake is to view Austen's work as quite repressed and straight-laced. In fact, Pride and Prejudice, when we look at the novel, is far ahead of its time in its use of irony and satire. Although the story may be fairly simple, it seems to be simple on its outer side, but her writings bring an excitement to it and the reader is drawn in by the characterization. We start empathizing with the characters in the novel. We try to visualize them. She is equally skilled in creating characters that are sensible or ridiculous, can be made fun of, characters that are smart, proud, naive or blithely ignorant. But at the same time, they are treated to be very real and natural. All of these types of characters which we observe in the novel are a depiction of the people of her own time whom she could see around her in the society, influenced in some way or the other by the people in the society around her. Now, after discussing the theme, the plot, the subplot and marriage being very important in the novel, let us discuss the humour, irony and satire as projected in the novel. We observe that one of the main devices used by the author throughout the novel is satire. She tries to bring in a satire on the social situations prevalent in her times. A literary tone used to make fun of human vice and weaknesses, often with the intent of correcting the subject of attack. Austen's sense of humour and intelligence allowed her to show the reader the follies and nonsense, whims and inconsistencies of her characters. The way she writes about Lydia and Mrs. Bennet are good examples of this. She does so without being unfair as she laughs not at them, but what they do in the novel. We also see that the harshest satire is directed at Mr. Collins, who thinks highly of people who are superior to him by birth. That is what he thinks is being superior. He has no qualms allowing himself to be demoralized and humiliated by them, as can be seen in his servile relation with Lady Catherine. He is also smug and conceited. When Mr. Bennett commented on the letter that Mr. Collins had written, he says the letter contained a mixture of servility and self-importance. When Elizabeth refuses his proposal of marriage, he replies she cannot possibly refuse him because my situation in life, my connection with the family of Lady Deborough are circumstances highly in my favour. So you better not reject my proposal. That's what he says. Living with people higher than him has started to make him think he is also higher than many other people in the world or in the society around him. The other person whom Austin satirizes harshly is Lady Catherine Deborough. She is the aunt of Mr. Darcy who thinks she can order around whomever she wants to. When she visits Elizabeth after hearing the rumour that Mr. Darcy was to propose Elizabeth, I know it must be a scandalous falsehood. Then she goes on to demand Elizabeth to promise that she is not going to marry Darcy if he even proposes her. Austin also uses irony to make fun of things, especially those things with social importance. We learn that Bingley's fortune had been acquired by trade. Therefore, it is ironical that Bingley's sisters should criticize Jane for having an uncle who lives near Cheapside in London. So at every point we observe 
that there are traces of humor, irony and satire. With this, we come to the conclusion of the novel. I hope you enjoyed reading the novel, empathizing with the characters, understanding the theme and also appreciating the style of Jane Austen. The plot and the subplot interwoven very well and also the irony and humor which is depicted very well through Jane Austen's novel Pride and Prejudice. Thank you.